Hi, I'm Stephanie. Um, welcome to, I guess, my portion of this e-course, which I'm talking about self-discipline, namely just sort of how to set yourself up, some tips and tricks, and then sort of how to carry yourself through the hard parts. The best place to start is with a solid foundation. So, step one, define your roles and responsibilities. Our lives sort of revolve around these day-to-day -day roles that we take on. For me, that's being a wife, a mother, and a freelance marketer. We may put on different hats from time to time, like a counselor or a friend or a teacher, but take a minute to sort of sit down and define what your core roles are, and then those are the roles that we're gonna work on elevating today. After you've taken the time to define what your core roles are, then you need to sort of list out what your responsibilities are. So for example, my role as a homemaker basically means keeping my home comfortable, clean, comfortable, organized, decluttered, stocked, all of those really fun things that go with it. My role as a mother consists of making sure that everyone is fed healthy meals, that everyone is educated and disciplined and played with and loved and read to every single day. As a freelance marketer, I'm responsible for meeting client deadlines, I'm responsible for pitching new projects, I'm responsible for invoicing, uh, keeping a lid on communication. The third step of this is actually to go through and build a schedule and a routine around those roles and responsibilities. I'm a big believer sort of in block scheduling because it doesn't have to be to the minute. So for example, in my house every morning we start off with what I call happy hour and I get the kids up, I make them breakfast, I get them, you know, sort of subtle at the table and then I make myself some coffee and we watch YouTube and we play with our toys and everyone just gets that, that moment to sort of get themselves together. After we do happy hour, we move into our sort of our daily, what I call the daily five, which I've done another video on and I will link it below, but it's the five things I do every day that keep the house running. So. I'll empty the dishwasher, I'll start a load of laundry, I make all the beds, I vacuum everything up, I de-hair my bathroom, and I wipe down my bathroom counters. After happy hour, we sort of move into like a daily like workout or activity. I, I subscribe to Beachbody program. It's a little app that comes through my TV. And so every day we get out my workout mat. We do like a little 30 minute workout. Um, my daughter, Charlotte, really gets into this. My son, Graham, just kind of likes to run around and be crazy, play basketball, just fun little, like a nice little, you know, get into it, get our energy up, workout activity. And then I usually will grab a shower and put the kids on their iPads, and then that's my time to sort of get ready for the day. After I, after I get showered and ready, I'll do a weekly chore. For example, on Mondays, I clean the bathrooms. On Tuesdays, I dust. On Wednesdays, I vacuum. On Thursdays, I mop. And Fridays, I do the appliances. This usually takes 15 to 20 minutes. After we do our weekly chores, the next block is sort of what I call just like the pre-K kids, um, I have a table set up and we do little learning activities, we work on their puzzles, we read books, we color, it's just sort of their, their hour, their one-on-one -on -one hour where we do shapes and letters and we talk about you know the different kind of animals, animal habitats, just whatever they're sort of interested in, I try to capitalize on the moment. So by the time that lunchtime has you know run around, the pretty hefty parts of our day have been completed. And then part two, self-discipline hacks, and you can file it under tips and tricks, but they're just little things that I have sort of learned that are tried and true to sort of like help keep myself going, creating a routine and a ritual. And I talked about happy hour um, in the first half of this video, but before happy hour, I usually will make my coffee. Um, it's very sort of a way that sort of like triggers my brain that okay the day is starting I don't think it has to be coffee I think it could be a smoothie or lemon water whatever your thing is but that's sort of what helps switch me into that when I move into sort of our daily five our cleaning chore I always turn on a podcast and then that sort of helps me like remind myself okay it's time to get going after that when we move into sort of our workout hour I always make myself an iced lemon water and that helps me move into that. I tell Charlotte to go get the mat, and she does. She loves that, it's like her little thing. Um, and then that sort of keeps us going. Before I shower, I always dry brush. So it's just these little teeny tiny things that you can set up that help your brain switch gears. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is 
daily resets and I learned this from Alyssa from House on Elm and she, she actually has a hashtag you can follow called um, reset my space. I would definitely follow it. It's one of my favorite ones but you sort of pick times that work for you to go ahead and do like a whole home clean. That's usually when I'm like making the kids lunch so um, I usually will get them at the table and I start sort of cutting up, you know, cheese and vegetables and all those things and I go around and I really thoroughly pick up every single thing that has been out and then that's the way by the time, you know, their lunch is done and I'm sort of, you know, making mine that the house is like pulled back together. I, I do another reset around 5.30 usually when I'm like getting the kids cleaned up from dinner and I'm starting on our dinner. Our kids eat different from us. Um, no judgment they like chicken fingers so those are two daily resets that I know that the house will be pulled together if that is too far apart and I understand if you have kids that it can be I would definitely suggest maybe setting a timer at the top of the hour so at like 10 a.m. at 11 a.m. at noon go ahead and pick up for 10 minutes get the kids into it usually if you if your house is you know relatively picked up you can probably get everything back together if you take those like 10 12 15 minutes whatever your thing is and i guess the third point of this set yourself up for success if you need a planner get yourself a planner if you need new cleaning supplies get yourself cleaning supplies if you're trying to incorporate a workout get yourself a workout outfit that you like and some tennis shoes but do not try and and I'm guilty of this I don't like to spend money on myself and so I will sort of make things that are not you know naturally supposed to be painful painful part three I'm gonna be talking about how to keep yourself motivated I guess what motivates you to keep moving so for me, that will always be just sort of beginning with the end in mind. And this is something that I picked up from Stephen Covey. He has this book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I'll link it in the description below. It's this really great book that sort of says, what do you want at the end of the day? And at the end of the day, I want to go to bed knowing that my house has been, you know, well looked after, that everything is clean and it's put back into its place and that the kitchen looks great. I want to know that the kids, you know, were read to and that they were played and they were loved and, you know, they were, you know, kept, you know, fed little healthy little snacks and not, you know, the crap that sometimes will work its way into our diet. I want to go to bed in my pajamas, in my nice clean bed. I want to have a book to read. So it's like I'm going throughout the day. I keep these things in mind that if I can get to this point that when the kids are asleep that everything has been, you know, taken care of, I just feel more myself. Another thing is we're going to go ahead and call it the buddy system. I have a really great friend. We talk every day, usually around the same time, but I will put on my beats and I will just, you know, talk to her and we'll clean up and we'll talk about our day and what's going on and, you know, this whole like I'm specifically right at saying this to stay-at-home moms because that's what I am. The whole stay-at-home mom thing, I don't want to say it's isolating. It's not. But I came from you know a professional environment before I switched over and sometimes when I'm talking to my friends before my, you know my before life it can feel kind of silly to talk about you know a cleaning project or an organizing project or you know a new um, a new thing I'm excited about that's like a dishwasher tab and it just feels very it can feel very small unless you're talking to someone else that also gets it and on that same note um, because I still do, you know, kind of keep my toe in the water with my freelance projects. I have two friends from my, um, my working professional life that I can run logos past and websites. And, um, it's good to sort of keep a system in place or a good friend that can understand your unique needs and then to value those friend those friendships. Um, for example, I have a really good friend who has children similar in age to mine and when she comes over I basically roll out the red carpet. I always try to make a fun lunch and make sure I have a lot of snacks cut up so that when she comes over here she's comfortable. I have friends from my past life, my marketing life that I can run you know, logos by and when they're in town I always make an effort to get dressed up and go out to dinner and talk about interesting things and that's the way I have a buddy that sort of fits these you know, unique needs so I would definitely suggest cultivating friendships being the best friend you can be. Then I did want to talk about, you know, self-reflection and improvement. You're not perfect. I'm certainly not perfect. I know that your opinion on your opinion on what you do matters most. Finding what motivates you to sort of be the most comfortable version of yourself, to be the happiest that you can be, 
that's that really is what's important and then that will sort of bleed through to areas of your life anytime there's a new year or a new month or a new week or you know maybe you had just a really bad day let that momentum sort of propel you to sort of improve what you want to improve i think that it's really important to know what works for you and what doesn't work for you i really would like to do better not do better I would re I really wish meal prepping worked for me it just doesn't it for me it's four to six hours in the kitchen at one time and I'm usually miserable for those four to six hours but I do like things like washing and drying um, strawberries and blueberries and you know little snacks and then that actually adds a lot of value and I can see the benefit throughout the week so just to sort of like recap the best things that you can do are to really zero in on your roles and your responsibilities, to build a routine and a schedule around those responsibilities, to find some sort of, you know, hacks or tips or tricks or whatever you want to call it to help sort of motivate you throughout the day. And um, then just to spend some time like really thinking about like why this is important to you. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed today sort of going through all these pieces and I hope that you can sort of fit them together and that it's enough information that you can sort of tailor it to your specific needs. But thank you for, thank you for following. Bye.